hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season three, episode two of The Handmaid's Tale, and this is called Mary and Martha. Hell of a kickoff to season three, last episode. We had June still in Gilead. It was really interesting going through the comments section because I thought I was going to be an outlier in kind of understanding why June would want to stay. Um, but actually the majority of comments from people were absolutely backing June's decisions. Yeah, I found that interesting. I thought that was gonna be way more controversial. Serena Joy went full Dracaris. Dracaris. On the Waterford house, it is burnt to dust and everyone seems to be separated. We don't know where Serena is, we don't know where Fred is. I'm really going to need to know where our beloved Rita is going. I want to still see Rita, please. June's gone off to live with Commander Lawrence. Commander Lawrence isn't so much a goodie as, as a complex character who's clearly invested in breaking the handmaids out. I don't quite know why. I don't know whether that was just his relationship with Emily in particular whether his allegiances are more widely, whether this is guilt about his role in developing the colonies, whether it's all just a scam and we're gonna be heartbroken all over again. I just don't know, but I'm, I'm just kind of keeping my mind open with him. My, my instinct is to cautiously explore that relationship with him. I think that's where I would be. If I was in this situation, that's where I would be. Because he's creepy. There's just no doubt about it. He is creepy and he says some things which I find really, really weird. So that's over there. But over here, his actions, so far as we've seen them recently, are positive. They're in our calls. I think if Lydia was dead, we'd have had a funeral last episode or there'd have been some reference to her death and there wasn't. And that makes me suspicious. Meanwhile in Canada, Emily has hooked up with Luke and Moira. But I think that covers off the big stuff. I just want to get into the episode now and find out where everyone is, what everyone is up to, and what, what this season is, is going to be about. Because it, it feels like the dots are connecting now to have some kind of attempt at taking down the establishment. I think that's going to take some time. But I was actually thinking about it the other day, and one of the issues we've explored very little in period like say uh, Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, Vichy France, but very few focus on the aftermath and the reconstruction process and how do you bring communities back together when members have oppressed each other to this kind of a degree. So I would actually be really up for this show exploring that, that it doesn't just end with you know a big hurrah moment when Gilead has technically fallen and, you know, commanders are lynched and lampposts and that sort of thing. But how do you rebuild? How do you re-establish trust? How do you hold those responsible to account without losing your own humanity in the process? I'd watch that show. So I'm really hoping that we get that bit. But anyway, that's me done. Let's get on with the show. Let's have at it. Is that June? I used to be bad at waiting. They also serve who stand and wait, Aunt Lydia said. She also said, not all of you will make it through. Some of you are shallow rooted. I pretend I'm a tree. And I wait. And Janine! Oh. Alma. Oh, I do know you. Blessed be the fruit. May the Lord open. Ugh, again. We're about to take back Chicago, my mistress tells me. I will keep our soldiers in my prayers. Oh, shit! I've been praying for the Waterfords, too. Why? That is kind of you, of Matthew. <laughs> Their poor, sweet baby. What did you say? Honey, what did 
she just say? I can't imagine what came over of Joseph. I am of Joseph. Now who's the pious little shit? <sighs> Miley, take me up security. Did me over the shelves looking a little bare relative to season one. Oh, Robert, did you see? They have canned tomatoes. Praise be. Sneaky. Learning. Casey had a baby. A shredder. Hard on the outside. It's awful. Did you ask your Martha about the Mackenzies? I tried. She's super mean. I'd leave the Marthas alone. Do you need help with something? No, thank you. The Marthas don't trust us. Who does? They're waiting for you. Who are? Blessed be the fruit to you. Uh. May the Lord open. <clears throat> I love how she can barely contain her laughter. I'm glad to see you're feeling a bit better, Aunt Lydia. Aren't you kind? <laughs> I didn't figure I'd see you back in this house anytime soon. A routine visit to see how our girl is settling into her new household. She's fine. <clears throat> She's fine. She's fine. Ah, have you found her respectful? We've had trouble with her in the past. Uh, yes. <sighs> oh, I want to go now. All right, my love. All right. And the ceremony? Our records show that of Joseph's fertile time was last week. <laughs> Mm. Mrs. Lawrence. She's she's just tired. Pleasure. As always. If there is something unseemly going on in this household with Commander Lawrence, you know you can always tell me. Emily was here two days, and God only knows what he did to her. I'd like to look at your room to see if it's ship shape. All right. I'm gonna go up all these stairs. Seriously. Just fuck off, Lydia. Are you okay? Maybe next time is better, all right? You shut your mouth! Elizabeth was soft. Oh. I would never have put you in a new posting. You should be on the wall. What the fuck? Everything is in hand. Commander Lawrence. Fucking psychopath. Get the fuck out. Of Joseph was seen gossiping at loaves and fishes. You liar. That simply will not do. Spare the rod, spoil the handmaid. Something like that. Quinn, take care, dear. Under his eye. You evil bitch. I wonder what the voltage is on those things. I gotta go to the uh, lawyers and then the embassy. Oh, come on. Play with her. Or hold her. Yeah, I, I gotta, uh, I gotta get these forms notarized for the national insurance number application. All right, you gonna be back for dinner? Emily? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fine with it. Uh, she's got family in Canada, though, right? So when's she gonna let them know that she's here? 
Look, everyone's timeline is different. This is healing up nicely. No swelling or discharge. That should go away in time. Cartilage doesn't heal as well as other tissue. It's a vascular. Also, chondrocytes can't mobilize to damage areas. Right. So you'll probably end up with a scar. This is a referral to an OBGYN for a consult on clitoral reconstruction when you're ready. And Dr. Wilson is a terrific psychiatrist. I want you to see now that you're transitioning out of acute care. That's all? That's it. Uh, watch that cholesterol. Cholesterol? You should be able to manage it with diet and exercise. Okay. So let's just be... Well, I'm going to pause that. Pause. Oh, my God. Can you even imagine how even to begin to reintegrate yourself into the world after going through what she's been through being able to speak being able to read things being able to have the agency over when she sees the doctor and what appointment she makes and all of these things after having every bit of identity and authority stripped from you i'm fighting to retain these little elements of it I'm glad there's such a thing as um, clitoral reconstruction because she deserves her clit back. I hope that progresses. But that feels like a really flippant point to be making in the context of she needs to reconstruct her whole identity. And she's not yet made contact with her family. And I'm guessing that's because she can't even bear the idea of them seeing them seeing her like she is right now. I could identify with that, you know, wanting to lick your wounds in private and kind of go back to them whole and not go back to them feeling. And it's not because it's true, but that, that you often have a perception of yourself, which is if you're struggling, then you're a burden and, you know, you don't want to put that on people necessarily. And actually, most people really want to be able to support the ones that they love. And it's much scarier and worse for them when they're separated from them and don't know where they are or, or how they're doing. I can see I may not like Luke any more this season than I've liked him in previous seasons. His sort of cup of empathy is not exactly overflowing at the moment. I think he's finding it quite difficult having the baby around. And he's sort of keen that Emily go off to her you know, actual family. And I kind of, I, you know, I understand it'd be a tough situation, but also this is just such a hell of a story. And that bit with fucking Aunt Lydia, it was nothing to do with what happened at Loads and Fishes. She was pissed because June attempted to help her, which put June in a position of power over her from Lydia's perspective. And so she physically attacked her and freaked out. Because she's a fragile, evil bitch. Absolutely horrible. Like, whatever pretensions Lydia has to, to, to caring for the handmaids are really subverted by moments like that of her, where I feel like you actually see the real Lydia. Which is a very scared, very inferior, petulant, spiteful person who needs to exert force over others to feel in any way empowered herself it is pathetic and disgusting and that is who she is she coats it in um in stuff that i think has some people believe that no she really does care for the handmaids even though she's per no she doesn't that's not how you express care for people but anyway, I forgot we're on a pause. I'm doing an end of bloody program review here. Right. Play. Cora, do you have anything for Burns? <sighs> Fantastic. Oh, Martha's a trying. We had to change pickup locations. I can't take her to the new one until later when it is safe. Why can't she stay here? <sighs> You're new, both of you. You don't know how things work around here. Hen party. Who are you? Uh, she's come to help polish the silver for your meeting. That's a lie. I'll see if I can find a guardian to take you home. Or wherever. 
Oh, come on. Stay in this room. <sighs> Commander Lawrence. I don't like strangers in my house. Why is there a stranger in my house? She's just here for a while, then she's gone. Sir. I asked you why. She's getting out. She just needs a safe place to wait. She, she keeps saying that. I don't know that person. You help me. She has a chance for something better. Let her have it. OK. It's your funeral. Is she a spy? Is this a, is this a double bluff, we think? We think he's been difficult, but actually he's been prudent, and that Martha's a spy. It would make sense that they would send him a spy at this point after all this disruption. It's all right. She can stay. I convinced him. That must have been some blowjob. Red Center special. OK. And thanks. Sorry, I'm just still... Red Center special is fucking brilliant. We should go now. I want to see how it works. We almost never move people. Messages, black market stuff, sometimes people are difficult, dangerous. I've noticed. I can handle myself. What, were you in the military or something before? No, were you? <laughs> High school chemistry teacher. <laughs> well, I'm the only reason why you're not all in an interrogation room right now, so you owe me. Come on, Breaking Bad, let's go. Better call Saul. Core's not going, so you need me. I am not afraid of hard work. All right. But not like that. Oh my God. Martha life. Oh, this is gonna be so interesting. We don't see it from that perspective very much. It's strange to finally be invisible. One of the reasons they chose red was the opposite. We're easy to catch because we're easy to see. Oh God. Gilead right now is insane. This pass is expired. I did nothing wrong. Move it. Let's go. We're not allowed in this part of town. Wow. Commercial laundries. Too many chemicals. Gilead's green, but they still like their dry cleaning. <laughs> this is nuts. Shut the door. I'm just taking everything in. It's like being back in the world again after being in this tiny little house all the time. Someone will come for you. You can't wait with me? We have to get back before we're missed. Good luck. June, come on. Martha's are sinners too. So we're told. I had my tubes tied. Lucky I can cook or I would've been upstairs at Jezebel's instead of in the kitchen. Wow. Did you know Moira? She called herself Ruby? Yeah. She made it to Canada. Allison's not going to Canada. She's going deeper in. Resistance all out west somewhere. She's valuable. Whoa. She makes bombs. <gasps> oh, whoa! I guess you don't know what you're capable of until you have to do it. Hey, I hope you don't mind the fish. I, I should have asked. No, fish is great. It turns out I have high cholesterol. Let Alina. Mm. What about you? your your wife? She's uh, she's a veggie or not? Luke. What? I'm just I'm cu I'm curious. Was it was a veggie or not? For the Go kids. get the fucking potatoes. Luke, fuck off. You, you know I. Do you not understand what she's been through? Particularly with men. Excuse me. Back off. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Don't even. It was all him. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Moira. You know, he looks at you and he sees June. He'd want her to call. He looks at you, he's afraid she wouldn't. I can't. Yeah, because it's terrifying. I've seen a lot of these reunions and it's not always a storybook ending. But nobody's talking about happily ever after. Just after. And he does make a great pie. <laughs> <clears throat> What the fuck was that? It's Mrs. Lawrence. 
follows them. Shit. Fuck. What happened? Get her to the basement. Come on. I'm sorry. I didn't know where else to go. What's going on? Okay. Is there anyone we can call? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. Shit. What's happening? Oh, shit. There's a fucking... What's going on? Guys, there's a big blood smear on the wall. Who's in the basement? Just Beth. We saw a rat. Mm. Liar. Someone's hurt. Same someone who was here earlier. Cora, get the door. She's here too. There's another woman. She's the one who's hurt, sir. She screamed. Get her out. Commander Moore. You heard me. Get her out. Fuck. Joseph? Is everything all right? Uh, make yourself comfortable. It'll just be a minute. Cora, can you please clean that up? There isn't a lot of bleeding. She might have internal bleeding. Oh Please. my god. Those guardians can get an ambulance here in two minutes. We tell them. No, we panicked and let them in Christian charity. No, we can't do that. They get her, she talks, they get the entire network, and they're gonna fucking kill her anyways. Shit. Oh shit. to the right door leads to the backyard go before Lauren sees you dead I thought they were gonna actually kill her then they sort of did they got no choice though do not let this be for nothing okay okay go hurry Godspeed June is smashing it go see the Mrs. Lawrence I was wrong it's not your funeral after all Women like you are like children. Asking for too much, taking whatever you want, damn the consequences. Is Mrs. Lawrence okay? Do not presume to speak to me about my life! I know it was a mistake. Sir, we had no idea she would come back. I mean, taking you in. Pause. Okay. One, I understand his position in that I just get his world. He's taken a risk and now he's got guardians knocking at the door and everything else. But calling June a child in the context of this fucking system that they've created because they cannot handle equal rights for women is rich. Rich. So fucking patronizing. Like, these men are so fragile and they need literally all of the women in their life to be subservient to them. And they're moaning about the entitled attitudes of women who say, don't want other women to be raped or killed. <sighs> Play. June's quite got the strength for this task. Get her over your shoulder, June, and squat her up. Beth! This is so horrible. Oh, God. Close her eyes. Close her eyes. Seriously, no spade? June, you can't do this. You need at least a fucking spade. Thank you.
for your hands. And Cora? Lauren sent her away. I don't know where. He doesn't like liars. And Cora's the one-eyed one. Oh, yes! She's gone. Okay. You know what? You wet? I'll go get a bottle. Oh. Hey, baby girl. You always got your shit together. We're all fucked up, okay? And they're right. <gasps> we all fucked up. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember when Hannah was this small. June went back to save her. Because I couldn't. You look like your mother. This episode is a dimer. And where's Rita? Oh, bless her. They should take an eye when they catch her. Piss off. Maybe her ears, too. Did you hear of John died? Her walking partner snapped. Pushed her in front of a bus. God rest her soul. <gasps> Three or four. Oh. Or worse. Better. Oh, God. Worse. So there's me literally thinking, oh look, an episode of The Handmaid's Tale that didn't make me cry and then it got me in like the last 10 seconds. That was a really strange episode. Um, I did find it quite slow because there was like a lot less dialogue than a normal episode. And so it felt like um, kind of a lot, a lot of watching. But that minor criticism aside, was really beautifully shot. I really appreciate that we are moving away from Waterford House and getting a bigger look at both Little America in Canada but also Gilead itself and just noticing some you know the changes around the edges that clearly security has really been greatly heightened in Gilead the metal detectors in the supermarket I don't think were there before, they were just going in and out. Um, there seemed to me to be fewer goods on the shelves, indicating that perhaps that talk of winning back Chicago might be a little bit of propaganda. Maybe they've lost other regions, who knows. But all is not well in Gilead. I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to getting back up into the hierarchy again at some point soon and finding out you know, what's, what's actually happening behind the scenes. Obviously, Deeply frustrating, as always, to watch June attempting to negotiate any position of power in this world. And with both Commander Lawrence and Luke over in Canada, kind of not acknowledging their male privilege in this situation. I, I really thought, I'm glad that Luke started dealing with himself at the end. That gives me some hope. But, you know, you would think he would be sensitive enough 
to know that a woman coming out of the horrific abuse that she has just endured does not need a man up in her face demanding answers from her. It just, it was absolutely wrong. It was so great to see Moira cut through that bullshit immediately and just be like, no, you need to fuck off. Go away. You know, take yourself out of this situation. So that was good. And just the whole episode to me has just left me kind of flat. I mean, I'm glad we had that scene at the end with Emily. That kind of was, you know, felt good. But it was definitely one of those episodes which you have to just get through with The Handmaid's Tale, where it's just most of it is dark. Nothing horrific happened in that episode by Handmaid's Tale standards. But it did feel like a slog. Aunt Lydia. Ugh. I did long pulls on her, so I won't go back to it, but hate her. And um, we didn't get to see Rita, Nick, Serena or Fred in this episode. So the mystery will remain as to where they are. I'm actually wondering if they're going to, you know, are there going to be episodes without June this season? You know, are we going to be looking into each of those characters? Are we never going to see them again? What's going to, I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. So yes, until the next time, bye-bye.